Welcome everyone to uh, AES Malaysia section monthly mixer um, meeting. This is our traditional online uh, gathering. We used to do it pretty much uh, face to face in person, but you know, throughout the whole lockdown MCO and even until to this day, we have kind of kept it online. Lah. So firstly, let me introduce myself. My name is JD, JD Wong. I am the uh, currently serving president of the uh, AES Malaysia section. AES Malaysia has been uh, around for quite a while. For those of you who are not uh, members of AES, Audio Engineering Society, I do suggest that you check it out. Head on to uh, AES's uh, worldwide uh, website which is uh, AES.org. You can either join as a um, associate member, you can join as a member, or if you are a student, you can join as a student. There are student rates as well. Uh. But if the worldwide membership is a bit expensive, you feel that, oh, you know, it's a bit pricey for you, you can also consider joining just the Malaysia section alone, okay? Uh, for more info, all right, I will discuss and I will share all this with you in the chat. Um, later on where you can go or maybe Michelle, maybe you can help me out. Maybe you can type in the chat, lah, right? The uh, Facebook page, our landing page, so to speak, which actually takes us to Facebook. All right, so a quick uh, few house rules, yeah? We only have uh, one hour with Phil, okay? We, we have to, so to respect Phil's schedule and to make sure that the meeting runs smoothly, please do ensure that your microphones are muted if you are not speaking, okay? If you have questions for Phil, please type them in the chat session and we will try to get to as many of them as possible, okay? One more thing, I also need to inform everyone that this meeting is recorded. So if you um, do not wish to appear on the recording, right, you can, of course, you can turn off your camera, but I hope that everyone can join in and turn you on camera so we can see your faces. Lah. Otherwise, it be, it feels so uh, impersonal. So without further ado, I want to uh, introduce and welcome our very, very special guest to our monthly meet, uh, mixer meeting, Phil Tan. Yay. How are you doing, Phil? Not too bad. Not too bad. We thank you so much for, for joining us at such short notice and most of all for Taking, taking your your time, you know, as you just explained to us that it's 5 a.m. where you are now. Thank you so much for, for accommodating us. Not a problem. For most of us, Phil here needs no introduction. His uh, history, his uh, list of credits, his awards. I think many of you do know that uh, Phil here is a um, um, Malaysian, Malaysian born. And uh, we are super, super proud and extremely honored to 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 have you uh, with us. I spent like the past couple of days really on a binge uh, on your website, going through all the interviews, the articles, and the and the, the numerous tutorials. Phil's website, by the way, is philtan.com. So please check it out. Consume as much and get to know you as much as possible. To be honest, I'm a little starstruck right now. And, and some of us probably are. <laughs> because, I'm just you know, a guy. I'm just a guy. So <laughs> A lot of uh, the articles and the interviews, some of them, they one, one common theme is that, you know, they always refer to you as the the quiet legend oh, wh why is that so and is it because you you let you let your work speak for 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 yourself i don't really know i mean i guess it's up to the writer to decide what words they want to use to describe me but um i mean generally i'm not a i'm not someone that tries to to look for attention so it's just not really my that's not my personality. So, Phil, um, let let's maybe maybe start. Where originally are you from? I, I was born in KL. I grew up in Klang. KL and Klang. Hey, any any Klang folks here in the in the chat? You mentioned earlier that you were you were back here in in Malaysia. You were visiting your uh, sister in Penang. Is this sister the 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 sister that's that's referenced in one of the interviews? Yeah. Well, both my sisters are are incredibly important yeah. to me in terms of where how I got to where I am so um I I'm not sure which interview that you're referring to but they're they're both um like they're probably they're among the five most important people as far as how my career got started what was it that um you know prompted you what was it that inspired your your decision and then down this career path yeah I mean honestly 
and you probably heard this before if you've been looking at my interviews i'm just lazy i don't want to have a job i don't want to have to feel like i'm working so i thought about stuff that i enjoyed doing and i wanted to draw comic books that was one and but i but at the same time i also felt like if i had to draw if i had to if i had, if i was forced to do it i don't think i would enjoy it but i can listen to music all day so I figured that's what I'll do, but I'm not, I can't really sing. I can't really, I, I don't play very well. So performance was probably not the way to go. So I thought some something behind the glass would be better for me. That's amazing. And that that's incredible. With that in, uh, with that in mind, um, you, you studied at, at Full Sail. So that was like um, back in 1989, 1990? Yeah, that's correct. Around around that time, how different it is? It would it be now in this in 2021 for someone who's aspiring to get into music or get into audio and to enroll in a music school or an or an audio school to get a get a degree nowadays? Um, because audio education is something that AS is very very uh, interested in. I mean, what what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, back. Back then, um, the reason I was accepted into Berkeley, I just couldn't afford it. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, even if they were to give me a, a scholarship at the time, I think it was explained to me that I could only qualify for 50% being an international student. So, and because you're on a student visa, you're only allowed to work part-time on campus. So there was just really no way I could swing it as far as the money angle. So I thought full sale would be a better better choice at the time the program was only eight months long so i could get in get out start working and it'd be great um at least that's what i thought at the time and full sale really was was a, a good place for me um people there at the school remain lifelong friends for me as far as what it was like then and now it's an entire world of difference the school has grown tremendously Uh, the programs have gone way over the top, in all honesty. And I, whenever I visit there, I tell the students, you know, when you leave this place, you're going to realize how bad everything really is. Their, their studios there, the equipment that they use there are state-of-the-art, top of the line. And you do get exposed to to a lot of things that you really won't actually get when you're actually in the real world. Um, as far as enrolling, um, the main obstacle will probably be financial. And it's not just full sale, it's really everywhere. Um, I, now, you know, forgive me because I'm not that familiar with some of the other, you know, audio technical schools in the universities in the rest of the world, but I'm somewhat familiar with those in the U.S. And they can all, all most colleges, most for-profit colleges are very expensive so again if you have a you know wealthy dad that's gonna say that's cool you can go then great but if not you're probably gonna end up in a decent amount of debt so uh, i think you kind of have to be sure that this is something that you truly want to pursue but having said that there are a lot of resources available nowadays online we literally have a wealth of information and i mean you know just uh, google search away really so You know, you can learn a lot of stuff on your own. And I think the the important thing maybe is to not um, not feel bad about not being part of an education program. Uh, sometimes you can feel a little bit inadequate because of that. But really, you might actually know more than me just from absorbing all the information that you have. Uh, available to you. Now, um, we have a few questions in the chat. You mix the uh, Criss Cross record, the Criss Cross album with the uh, Jump, right? I did not. Not the first not. album. So it was the it was the, the following album. Right. But so towards the tail end, uh, I met Jermaine before that, yeah. you know, uh, right after he finished that album. He That album was done, I think he did it with the Niccolo Brothers who owned the record label, Rough House. I had met him at the time and we got along great so after that we we started working together a lot right uh yogi says can we ask the question directly um can, if you can you can uh, please do i can see yeah. the chat yeah sure so. you can just type it in the in the chat and then you know 
we um, then Phil can answer you directly. So I think let's get on with the first one. This is from Elton. Uh, Elton is, is Collins. Yeah, Elton yeah. Collins. Yeah, right. Um, become friends. Yes. Elton's question is: What do you think of Dolby Atmos as a format for music, and should we be familiarizing ourselves with the format at this point? Yeah, you should definitely start getting um, finding out how how to work in Atmos. I think it's going to become a, a part of the deliverables for uh, any any record that you work on moving forward. Um, very just again, very simply. Dolby has an agreement, the way I understand it, Dolby has an agreement with Warner Music and uh, Universal Music to produce uh, their content in that format. So Sony has its own um, immersive format mm -hmm. called Sony 360. So if, um, if you're going to be working with these labels, chances are they will want you to have Atmos mixes delivered. And I can verify that they are... Um... There are some projects which I've uh, mixed here, where they do request for the uh, the 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 stems because they want to do Adobe Adobe mixes. So that has that has started here as well in uh, in uh, in Malaysia. This was this was something for Universal, yeah, here in Malaysia. How about yourself, Phil? I, have, do you have you gotten into mixing for Adobe Atmos? Yeah, I've done some some mixes for Atmos Atmos. Okay. The, mostly in the past year. What's your uh, your setup like? Your your rig for for Atmos? Very simple. It's just basically, it's a uh, it's I have a small USB C screen um, that because it's I still work in Pro Tools. I I know Logic and for Logic and Nuendo, uh, Atmos is I mean Adobe plugin is uh, native. So if you work in those. Uh, DAWs, you can just not worry about it. But in I still work in Pro Tools, so the uh, Atmos or uh, the Adobe, I should say, uh, plugin is a has to be a, basically the playback engine. Like the, uh, it's helpful to have a separate screen to have have that on. There's one from John John Jeeva Singham. His question is: Do you find yourself regularly updating the tools, plugins that you use, or do you stick with the familiar? faithful stuff that gets the job done actually i think it depends on the session that i'm getting uh, if i'm getting a session that was basically built in pro tools and a lot of the plugins that are that were there before get leap gets left on there i will listen to them first so if they if they work fine and there's nothing really wrong with it i'll just go ahead and keep them where it is but if someone sends me you know, let's say they work in Ableton and they exported a bunch of stems. Uh, sometimes they will give me processed stems. Sometimes they'll give me unprocessed stems. It really depends. I don't really have a set rule or requirement for that. Just send me, send me whatever you think is uh, you want me to have. And I'll, I'll deal with it. So if that's the case, then generally I will use the stuff that's familiar for me. There's yeah. so much yeah. stuff out there. You can't have everything, so uh, you know, the the then you gotta remember I'm old, so I've a lot of old habits kind of die hard. So it's actually something that I've also read in one of those uh, the interviews you you gave you gave that that answer as well, and I found it so uh, uh, interesting that sometimes you will go go out of the way to even purchase and, and buy the plugin if you that's what you find in the session if you don't oh, have sure. it sure i mean yeah. you know it's not a that's pretty actually pretty common again i'm working all the time so i don't always have the, the time to to try new stuff so if something gets introduced to me via through a session that someone else is doing and i find that it's a, it's a helpful tool for me moving forward then yeah i'll yeah, new stuff comes out all the time. There's always something new. And if it can help me to do my job, then yes, I'll be certainly interested. I'm not the kind of person who 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 looks at looks at this as a okay, it's a it's it's a moving target really. Like so there's always something to learn. There's always something to to there's something that I don't know. 
actually, there's something that everyone, all of you know something that I don't. And I can learn from all of you. If you're willing to teach me, that is. So that's kind of how I, I approach things. That, that's such a great attitude uh, and, and, a, and a mindset to have. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I always say that learning is always a, it's a lifelong process and and it's also a two-way process. We can learn from you. The other person can also learn from us uh, in, 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 the, in, the same, in the same time. So thanks for that. Thanks for that answer. Um, from John again, he has another question, okay? Anyone else, right, uh, has questions, please type them in the chat, yeah? So uh, John asks, when you receive um, projects and vocal tracks from artists like uh, Ariana Grande, how much processing is already on the vocal? Does it arrive completely unprocessed, uh, dry? Yeah, again, depends. It, different people prefer to send you different things. See, Ariana, if just let's just talk about Ariana since that was specifically mentioned. Those sessions came from Pharrell. So they were they were just Pro Tool sessions. If they were other artists, for example, like say um, something from uh, Emi Nikkei, if he were to send me stuff, usually he has it processed already. So if I don't like the processing, I will go back to him and I say, hey, I think this is too this or that. Can you give me an unprocessed version? And I can, it gives me a little bit more freedom. Now, someone like him who is um, incredibly good at, you know, engineering on his own already. Like, so he, he usually doesn't miss by much. So it's, you know, what he has, you can basically work from there. So basically you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, so in, so K-pop sessions that I get are typically completely unprocessed. I don't know why, but that's how they prefer to send their, their material out. So, but that's okay too. It's not a problem for, for me. This really depends on the client. Right. Okay. That's great. Hopefully that answers your question, John. Um, all right. Uh, Yogi. So Yogi, what's your, uh, what's your question? Is that your question? What's your rig now? Yeah, my rig is super simple right now. It's uh, it all fits in, in a backpack and a rolling rack. I mean, a rolling case, so I can I can pretty much work wherever I go. Um, as as I mentioned earlier in 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 the program, I was uh, I was in Penang for quite some time, and I was not able to go back home um, because of the lockdown imposed by the Malaysian government. So. Uh, most of most of my work was just basically um, laptop and headphones. So um, that that would be a MacBook and uh, what sort of headphones are you using? I'm using um, Sennheisers. So I have a, a pair of five eighties. They don't even make those anymore. And, and those headphones are your go to if you are mixing on on headphones or. Were, did, or did it just happen to be the ones you brought along? So they, they were the ones I brought along. Eventually, uh, I also have a, again, they're the same thing. They just, they were just marketed differently. Those were the very first pair of headphones that I bought professionally back, back in the 90s. I think it was 95 or something. I'm not much of a uh, headphone person. I usually prefer speakers. But um, because I decided to try to be more mobile, um, so I tried a whole bunch of stuff. I really did. I tried the, I tried the virus that you have. I believe that's what you have on. I tried yeah, the, yeah. Uh, I tried Odyssey's, which I really like, but they're heavy. Mm. So, and I didn't, it gave, they gave me a headache after a while. Um, so the most comfortable ones still ended up being the, the HD 580s. So eventually I got an HD 600 pair as well. And again, I've tried the HD 800s, any number of really high-end stuff. And the ones I keep going back to are the, the 580s and the 600s. So there, there is there is some comfort and familiarity as well with with the, yes. those headphones. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Again, I don't don't get me wrong. I I love my Odysseys. They uh, you know they're fun to listen to. Uh, you got to drive them right because you know they're kind of high impedance. But at the same time, for for being able to wear them for long periods of time, the Sennheisers are the ones. Here we go. All right. Uh, Yogi mentioned. Oh, wow. oh, okay. These are all the uh, technical uh, uh, questions. 
Um, can, can you see it in the, in the chat, Phil? Because it's it's been yeah. long. So I can see it. Yeah. As far as EQs, um, I'm you know again kind of old school, so I tend to go. I stick with the, what's the Pro Tools. Since I work in Pro Tools, the standard Pro Tools EQ I use a lot. I use the Focusrite D2 a lot, and I use the Channel Strip um, uh, Metric Halo Channel Strip plugin a lot. Because again, back in the day when when I first started working in the box, there weren't many channel strips available. So uh, the Metric Halo was one of those that had everything. So yeah. that's I'm, I'm used to it. I like the way it sounds. It um, Compressor, um, that one's a little bit harder because I think that one kind of depends on what it is that I'm looking for. Is it is it just a straight compression thing? Is it a coloration thing? Is it, you know, what what is it? So if I'm looking for a classic EQ, I'd probably look under the universal audio. To me, those were the, that really was the key for me saying, okay, I can really do this entirely in the box. Favorite console, I have still have to say the SSL. Um, I'm, I tend, I've had good luck with uh, Dyn Audios as far as monitors. No, I don't re really listen very loud when I'm working. So it's almost always maybe 80. Like if, you know, if I can, you and I can have a conversation and still be able to hear. Uh, I, I just don't listen very loud. And I almost, I know this sounds probably weird, but I almost never turn, change the volume unless there's a client in the room. Let's see. Software reverbs equal hardware units. I, I have to say close, but not quite. Hardware units tend to, again, it also depends on what you mean by hardware units. Are you talking about the, the actual like an actual spring reverb or chamber reverb um, or digital units. Digital units, they're the same as plugins. But, you know, nothing sounds like the chambers in Capital Studios. That's its own thing. Nothing sounds like the stairwell at the power station in New York. Oh, I, I don't know what it's called these days. Okay, let's see. What When are schedule for mix with the master? I have not scheduled for anything with mix and the masters. Uh, at the moment, uh, yeah, someone did ask me that whether they they were you going to do a course with with them. They've asked me, but the timing just hasn't quite worked out. So maybe in the future, I I don't I'm not closing the door or anything. I've done some a couple of, uh, something online with them, like a Q and A, like similar to this um, via Skype, but nothing in person yet. Do you have some creativity to do the mixes so it has specific style of the mix or do you follow what is requested to artist producer? Okay, so I my job is to basically provide a service. So my goal is to to make sure that whoever hires me is happy with the end result. So that's really that's really what it comes down to. How far do you want me to go kind of depends on the situation. There are times when an artist or producer or even a label, they've gotten used to hearing a rough mix, for example, and they like the rough, the way the rough mix sounds. So they just basically want me to enhance that. And then there's certain artists who, who say, yeah, I've listened to this song for six months. I don't, I want some new ideas. And then they basically tell you, you know, go to town. And so in those situations, you get a little bit more freedom. So it's hard to say it's, it, again, not to avoid your question. It just really depends project to project. Yeah. Thanks for that um, question, uh, Michelle. Uh, I, I recommend everyone, please go and read the articles and interviews. A lot of the an answers actually are all, all in there. <laughs> and yes, Reening's question, uh, any differences your approach? between your approach now to your approach back then in uh, mixing and do you foresee any changes in the future oh this is from hyrule so Hy hyrule is another um, um one of our members he's probably not able to join us i don't know that there's necessarily any difference in my approach again my job is to make sure that whoever hires me is happy with the results so in as it would Again, this is 2007. So that and SOS, that's probably that'll be uh, uh, Stargate or the producers. 
So, and I've had a good, long working relationship with them. So we kind of know each other pretty well. And th those guys as producers are, uh, they're immaculate with their, the, their production choices. Their productions are usually quite simple, but all the sounds are very well chosen. All the parts are really well arranged and they're very good engineers in their own right. So the, the recording is usually pristine. It's really, uh, it's really a pleasure to work on stuff like that. Let's see. Foresee any changes in the future? Yes, there will always be changes in the future. You, it just never stops. It'll continue. Music is not, you know, as you know, music in the 80s sounds different from the 90s, from the 2000s, etc. There's always new trends that come about and there's always new flavors, new techniques that come about and you just kind of have to be aware of the uh, evolution and be able to address it. If you stay put in one place, then it's, it's not probably going to be terribly uh, productive. Do you find that um, music maybe in the States um, does it go in around in, in cycles in, in, in some way, you know, because sometimes we see a little bit of a resurgence of the retro sounds that, you know, kind of, uh, hark back to the eighties drums and synth, um, sounds that seems to be coming around, uh, some, somewhat, did, did you see that? You know, I think generally speaking, so the guys that listen to the, to the eighties stuff when they were younger. So now, now they've kind of grown up and they've become producers on the, in their own right, so to speak. So we, there's always going to be some recycling of stuff, you know, um, but I don't think it's a, that's necessarily a bad thing. Uh, okay. Then um, Michelle's question is, um, this is a pretty long one. What's the biggest change felt in terms of technology from the start of your career till the present day? And where do you think the industry uh, is heading? Yeah. So as far as technology, the probably the biggest jump was around the late nineties, early two thousands from changing from analog uh, to digital. I mean, yes, in the nineties we had, we used digital tape, but hard disk recording was still pretty, pretty expensive. So when hard drives became uh, inexpensive and processors became more powerful and then Pro Tools, H Pro Tools HD really for me anyway was the start of the that change as for so that was that was a pretty major turning point but as far as the um upcoming changes i don't know that it's going to be again this is just me i don't really know at this point the the biggest change at the moment is within the industry is that now you as a mixer will be probably required to turn things in immersive formats like atmos um where do you think the industry is heading? I don't know. New mix engineers should be aware or learn when mixing different ranges of music. Okay, so here's where I think. In When I first started out, uh, the goal was to get to a point where you could specialize. So, yes, you want to be good at one thing and really good at one thing. Now, I think if you're coming out, uh, that's actually bad. You should probably be as versatile as you probably can. Learn as much as, as you can, not just in music, but video games, TV, film. Um, and if you if you have, again, I'm I'm referring to someone that's starting out. No, it, it's early in their careers. So the more helpful you can be in, because these areas are now cross pollinating. They're they don't just, music doesn't just stay in music anymore. They get used in films. Films um, have become easier to make. Not everything is big budget anymore. You can do a lot of things with a lot less money. So if you know how to mix film music, you know, like a re-recording mixer, for example, that could be helpful to you moving forward. Video games is huge business. If you're able to work in, in that, if you have some working knowledge of that, that could be useful to some people. So yeah, they, and again, it's not just, uh, it's just not one area, unless you, you very specifically want to focus on one area and you shouldn't. 
again, if you're independently wealthy and you don't have to worry about money, by all means do that. But if you need to make a living, yes, then I think versatility is important. So uh, Yogi says, which model of the SSL of uh, the 4000 series was the one I kind of grew up on. So the, that's kind of the tone I still go for as much as possible. Um, again, that's just me. So a lot of other people prefer more uh, like a more colored sound like a Neve, but you know. So, uh, Yogi again, how do you gauge the low, low end, end yeah. to listen at low volume? Um, when I was in my studio, I was very, I was very familiar with my space. I worked in it for a long time, so I knew exactly how the, I kind of know ex almost exactly. It, it's like in, if you if you have a favorite car that you listen to in your music, you kind of know exactly how that sounds like. It's like that for me with um, with my listening devices. And again, I do rely on the my, the people who I work with a lot. So if the if the creators come back to me and say, yeah, I think we need to address the low end a little bit more, it's too much or too little, then I'll, then I'll, I'll obviously we got to do that. Right. Back to, but back to not, the key phrase of being, you know, a service provider, we, we're serving our clients, yeah. right? It's always, always yeah. a good thing to keep in, keep in mind. Yeah. It's no point being so adamant on, you know, how my mix should sound or how, how I want it to be. It's, it's, it's all about serving what the client client wants in the end. Right now, having said that there, there have been a couple of times where, um, after, after I turn in a mix, for example, a first pass of a mix, I do, I realize that we, whoever it is that I'm working on, we are not going to be working together. Well, mm -hmm. uh, and it, music is a taste thing. It's like, you know, you might like your sambal really, really spicy. And I might think, yeah, yeah, I just want it kind of in the middle of the road. Neither of us are wrong. We just have preferences. So if you, and music's the same way. So someone hears things a certain way, you kind of go, I don't know that I agree with that. Now, if you're going to be constantly butting heads throughout the working process, it's probably better if you, you guys both step away. But fortunately for me, that hasn't happened that often. So it's just maybe a couple of times over my career. That's a very important lesson to 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 take to force to take take with us as well. Sometimes there's no, you know, um, compatibility, so to speak, when you when you get get to that. So you, since you since you mentioned spice and sambal, do you still like do you, do you like the spicy food? I do. Right. Okay. Right. Everyone wants to know. Does Phil Tan, uh, uh, you know, being in the states for so long, still enjoy the spicy food? That's the thing I miss the most, actually, when I when I'm away from home. Well, so but, uh, Yogi says, yeah. how, many how many stems, stems do we see? Yeah. I don't, it, uh, it's completely different from project to project in song to song, really. So some, the last, uh, a recent mix I got only, they only gave me 12 stems. So they were quite pleased with the way they had it, you know, so there wasn't, uh, they didn't want to change the balances too much. So the drums were, were a stereo track, the percussion was a stereo track. So it's a, uh, so in that situation, you just basically try to enhance what's there. Uh, then, as I mentioned, you know, if we, if we get stuff from like the, the K-pop guys, when they send stuff, it's a lot. So they could be upwards of 200. So it just really depends. No, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Mm -hmm. So again, not avoiding your question, just I can't really give you a it's just completely random yeah it, it depends yeah you know yeah there's there's no there's no exact right answer for for everything um reading like um very quickly because we've like only got maybe like less than 10 minutes left what's the most unusual unorthodox thing that you would in a mix that somehow worked i don't know um <laughs> i really i really don't know because I, I tend to work by feel a lot you know i again i don't know this for a fact but i've heard from other clients to where they when they work with other mixers it's kind of like yeah this is what you get and this is this is basically it and i tend to prefer getting feedback from the clients to tell me how where things should go when and sometimes you know my instincts are not since they're the creators they know the song much better than i would so that's kind of how i i 
that's why I look to them for guidance in that regard. So if they tell me, hey, look, this is too clean, this is too this or too that, I tend to follow their lead. I think as a creative, you you need to to be open to letting accidents happen. So when something happens that you didn't expect, um, it could work. And it um, it could really open up a whole different, you know, I read an article once that um, Imogen Heap was working on a record and she works from home and she couldn't get a snare sound right. And she sat back and helped and just looked up into the ceiling because she couldn't get it right and she was frustrated. And she noticed bugs in the, underneath the lights in trapped on the, um, in her, in the lights in her ceiling. So she thought, okay, well, cool. So she got up and she sampled her hitting the light. And that ended up becoming the snare sound for that song. So you, you never know where these types of inspiration or ideas can come from. You just have to be open to them and mentally allow them to happen. So I'm sorry, I can't understand. Uh, I can't answer that question specifically, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of really weird stuff that goes on during the process uh, when you work with people that you, you know, if something just doesn't work, you try to look outside of it to, to see if there's any ideas that can happen. And ideas come um, any number of ways. I've, I've been, I've had ideas in my dreams before where they, in the middle of the night, I get an idea for a song I'm working on and it wakes me up and I go, uh, okay, well, I'm going to try this. So, you know, keep an open mind, basically. All right, Renik says, thank you so, thank you so much. Yeah, Yogi's got a bunch of questions here. Uh, sample uh, rates. Um, yeah, they're okay. So with Atmos stuff, you have to turn it in twenty four forty eight as of right now. Yeah. So generally speaking, most people send me stuff in either twenty four forty one or twenty four forty eight, but I've received any number of different rates, uh, 192, 96, it really depends on the project and how, what they want to do with it. All right. Okay. Favorite mastering engineer for a hip hop genre. I don't have a favorite mastering engineer. Uh, I work with a bunch of them and uh, a lot of them are actually my friends. So it really kind of depends on what the client is looking for. Now, if they ask me for my opinion, I'll tell them. Um, uh, a, a good friend of mine that's the hot guy right now is Colin Leonard. He's based in Atlanta as well. Uh, check out his site. It's Sing Mastering, S-I-N-G. Another good friend of mine is a good, uh, he's mastered a couple of uh, Grammy Award winning uh, gospel albums. His name is John Horesco. And um, so check him out as well. H-O-R-E-S-C-O. There's so many really good mastering engineers. Um, Randy Merrill, uh, it, up in New York, he's mastered a bunch of the stuff that I worked on. Uh, great results, so I, it's hard to say. Uh, the first guy that I worked with uh, as far as mastering was Bernie Grunman. So uh, so he's kind of got a, I got a soft spot in my heart for him. Yeah. But yeah, there's a, there's a ton of really good mastering engineers. That's okay, great. Awesome. Do I back up yeah. my cloud? Uh, yes, backing up is important. So we usually have at least three copies of every project that we do somewhere. Um, my, I will have the main copy, a backup copy. And my assistant will have a, a copy and a backup copy probably. That's great. And my answer is terrible. So <laughs> that's, that's the, yeah, that maybe we can wrap up with that final question there. If, uh, you know, sis. Your, your boss is terrible. And uh, yeah. what do you miss of Malaysia? <laughs> I miss a lot of things. I yeah. miss, um, I, I, as, as I mentioned, I miss the food quite a bit. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a really lush place. Like, uh, the, the, the biodiversity is incredible over there. Like, if you, if you um, as I mentioned, I was in Penang the last time. So, before I left, I made sure I, I had I got a walk up in Ang Hill, and uh, you know, just this it's uh, it's a lovely place. You no, know, uh, I haven't been to Penang in like a 
long time as well because we were stuck here in KL Klang Valley for 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 a very long time. <laughs> yeah. So I guess um, that's that's pretty much it. And Yogi B also, uh, I think he speaks for all of us and he kind of sums it up. You know, terima say Phil. Thank you, Mr. Phil. Uh, you make us Malaysians proud. Yeah. De 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 definitely. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. So. And uh, uh, guys, everyone, I do highly recommend uh, if you really want to dive into the mind of uh, of of, uh, of Phil Tan, go to the website. Go to the website. Check out the list of the uh, the uh, articles and the interviews and the, and also a lot of tutorial videos that are on that uh, website as well. So, right, I highly recommend that. Uh, I've been binge binge watching and binge reading this for the past uh, uh, <laughs> two days or so. So, my 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 brain is all filled with you know uh, your your anecdotes and your stories and and your quotes from all those uh, various articles there. Yeah, on behalf of uh, AES Malaysia and everyone uh, on board here thank you so much for you know spending um this evening here with with us we are so honored we are we we truly we appreciate you know that that you've, you've uh you know taken the time at 5 a.m and it's 6 a.m right now to to uh <laughs> to to speak with us yeah well thank you for inviting yeah. me um at you know, at my from my website, there's an email contact info at filtan.com. So you're welcome to send me any questions that you have. Do you have any any sort of um, sorry for interrupting? Do you have any maybe any any closing words or or um, closing piece of advice to to give to to all of us here? I uh, I don't know. It's uh, just I, I basically you know keep keep doing what you love doing. It's the it's not always going to be easy. They'll you, but you know, I, as I mentioned, allow yourself. Don't focus so much on where you think you want to be. Uh, focus on the now, and how uh, the process uh, is is can, will be more enjoyable. Allow detours to happen. Allow mistakes to happen. Uh, don't beat yourself up too much over over you know, mistakes because they can be very educational. Those are indeed, indeed wise words. And in fact, you know, the, the whole, yeah, you've been dropping many, many, you know, um, nuggets of, of wisdom throughout our whole uh, um, chat and our very whole kind. conversation throughout. Yeah. So um, we, we're we not going to keep keep you any, any longer. Uh, our meetings usually last for uh, two hours. We usually hang around here until 10. So if uh, anyone else wants to hang around, we will usually... You know, um, just do a little bit of our own um, uh, catching up. Uh, if you want to hang around, uh, feel uh, feel free to do so. Uh, but if uh, but if you uh, if you need to go, all right, uh, we'll we uh, uh, we will all like say, say goodbye to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to go. But all right, so I have a I have a call with uh, UK. So all right, so sure. could we maybe just do a quick um, um, snap of. Uh, of uh of everyone can if anyone can you turn on your cameras we'll do a quick screenshot here or is everyone a bit shy paul and uh, michelle jason no 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 cameras reading oh john says he left the webcam at home okay and i'm not dressed okay too much information john All right All right <laughs> okay here we go All right everyone ready we'll do a screenshot one two three okay Great. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Phil. All right. You're and welcome. We'll let you All get right, on to your, to your UK call. Yeah. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. And good right. well, good night to us, but good morning to you. Indeed. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Hey, everyone, you can uh, unmute yourselves. If you are still uh, hanging around, if you still want to hang around for our Monday Mixer, we will still be here until... Uh, 10 p.m. lah, right? Or if anybody needs to go. <laughs> it is a great question, everyone. Thank you. Thank hey, you JD, so much. I just want to say, JD, I just want to say thanks for arranging this. I truly appreciate it. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, it's it's put together at the very very last minute. So you know, I do apologize if it's not that doesn't seem so professional or or or, or well organized lah. You know. Like like our other sessions, yeah. 
but you know he uh, managed to get in touch he managed to get a reply from him like literally i think on monday yeah like like monday night and then considering the time differences <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, when, when i when i when i when i see the email it's like alamak it's like it's like already 10 10 hours after he replied <laughs> yeah like, thanks, ooh. thanks, dude. Hey, man. Yeah, dude was uh, uh okay. Good lah. Uh, after ooh. after today's session, I feel inspired. Uh, I, I guess you know such a you know a great a, a person who has you know gotten the highest accolade uh, in pop music Grammys, three Grammys. Talk like you know is your neighbor neighborhood brother. Uh, Correct, bro. Yeah, uh, three Grammys, bro. Yeah, three Grammys, and he can be so humble, lah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you see. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for organizing this again. Hey, dude, no, no worries, man. This is for this is for everyone. Hey, uh, you know, there there are a few people um who's uh feel free if you want to unmute yourselves, you can chit chat, you know. Um, you know, uh who else? Uh uh Song Yi, thank you so much. You know, you you are you're new here, reading. Uh uh Ivan, have, have you you've been to our meetings before, right? Yes, I am. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good to see you. No, I mean, as in the uh, this this Monday meeting, I know we we met face to face in on the on the ground, like, we Yes. Have, like, yeah. 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 Um, Monday one, I don't. Uh, I can't remember. I think join one, but I don't know if it, if it's considered the Monday mixer one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Jaggy, have you thought about coming out to Penang and hosting, uh, maybe doing a monthly mixer from here? Oh. Well, okay. That no, that that the thought has not uh, crossed my <laughs> mind. <laughs> please, please let me know if you would consider doing it and how we can make that mm -hmm. work for you. Maybe do it from our studios here and let me know what, uh, maybe what I could do to help. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean the the um um I mean the, the monthly meeting thing is more like a social thing. So uh -huh. yeah, it's it's more it's uh um it's kind of we've gotten used to doing it online this way, I guess, sure. for the past year and a half. And uh and traditionally um but hey, but here's what what would be interesting. You know, uh it would be it would be interesting if maybe we can do a little visit you know i can do a little visit or a bunch of people can do a little a visit to your to your studio up up there in uh in uh in, in penang wow. yeah that would be, that would be you great. know and uh you know we do a little tour we do a little virtual tour or or, or, or something like that that that's something that we, sure. we could do and it's one of the activities that we were planning to do you know at the start of 2020 we did one of the first things we did was we did a tour of the King Studios here in in K, in the in the KL in PJ. Um, it's like the oldest uh, studio in in Malaysia. It's like a very historical site. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's true, and yeah. so so we did, so, so we did that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you know, definitely we can probably plan something. With, we'll we'll plan something like that. Yeah. Did you did you did you hear did you read MK's comment or? Yeah, I know Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, MK. Uh, yeah, MK is Michelle, uh. Michelle Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> our 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 dear ex ex president. Yeah. Okay. Es especially our drivers out here in Penang. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, did just, sorry. Yeah. So sorry, you were saying something? No, no, no. Nothing sorry. important. Am I to understand that he's mixing from a laptop? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, he's got a um, uh, no, because he was I I was chatting with him earlier. Uh, uh he was actually stuck. He was actually here in Malaysia for quite a while. He was stuck here. Uh, yeah. Mm. So the material should have had the opportunity to go see him. Uh, I uh, I was fortunate enough to hang out with him quite a few times while he was out here. Yeah. Um, Lucky excellent. you, you know, uh, Alfred. It is it, the the person that you guys spoke with tonight is exactly who it is. Um, it's just so graceful and so humble. Yep. And uh, you just learned so so much from him. Um, uh, his rig 
I'll, I'll try and find a picture on my phone of, <laughs> of what it looks like. Okay, uh, yeah. It's just crazy when you go out and you listen to the stuff that he's just done and I'm going, wait a minute, he just mixed the stuff on his dining room table and it just sounds amazing. Uh, there was one new song from Emory, I think. Uh-oh. So he's basically uh, now uh, in the box, huh? is it, Jerry? Sorry, yep. He's um uh he's pretty much in the box for a long 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 time already. Yeah, he's very much an, an ITB person. Again, you know I've um, um uh, I've I've uh, read a lot of his uh, interviews like, and you know, yeah, he's pretty much an, an an ITB person. Yeah, is it right, Elton? Yeah, just a laptop and then his headphones. Yeah, right? I'm trying to uh, uh, just find the picture yeah. that I took. Um... The headphones are so HD uh, 600, huh? The Sennheisers. Yeah. Uh, this is pretty much it. Yep, those are oh, the, okay. the, the Dyn Audios. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. What, what's that on the left? Huh? His sound card, antelope, isn't it? Uh, no, he uses a little controller, a uh, monitor controller. What, what, is, what controller is that? Is that SPL? I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Can... It's not even an interface, not even using an, there's an, an, an interface. Yeah, he uses uh, the Avid and then he's got an HD in a Thunderbolt chassis and mm, a see. UAD satellite. Right, okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and that's, that's it. <laughs> it's just, it's crazy. See um, how, how, how far we've come. It's, it's all about the person lah. Yeah, you know, it's not really about having that big SSL in front of you. You know, it's really about yeah. what's in between the, the it's, two it's ears. It's really humbling sometimes, yeah. right? When you sit with all this equipment and then he pulls up with a laptop and does does an amazing mix. Um, yeah. You really go back to the studio and you start turning things off <laughs> instead of turning them on. Yeah. Super, super awesome. Yeah. Yeah. J John, uh, what are you doing? Hey. Uh, are you busy am I right, now? right now? Yep, we uh, hear no, you. I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah, you caught me at a good time. I just I just got back from the washroom. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm are in you the studio. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm in the studio. Uh, in, in KD. Yeah. At uh, Omar K's oh, place. Okay. Yeah, um, just prepping for a recording tomorrow morning. Just printed the lyrics, uh, open the project, make sure it works. <laughs> Re recording in my morning. morning. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah, Malay pop scene, it's usually during business hours. Uh, between tomorrow is 11 30 in the morning. Uh, the latest that we schedule is 4 p.m., and we wrap up by 6, and everybody goes home and have dinner. So wow. it's like when everyone asks me like, oh, you're in the music industry, you must be working like overnight and think, uh, no, not really. <laughs> I'm home for dinner most of the time. That's yeah. nice. <laughs> we, we do that on purpose because like, yeah, I mean, all of us here are like married guys like me, Omar, Iki. So we try to go back and have dinner with the family as much as possible. That's great. Wow, that, that's actually really, really good to hear. Mm -hmm. uh... Yeah. Like, for example, Dato, like Dato City, she'll record at 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. So we eat at 12, she comes in at 1, she's done mm -hmm. by 2, and she's out. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, so. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Don't tell me she never, never she never is done by 2.30? Uh, she's very fast. She's like <laughs> one hour and we get everything. Yep. Like, I want yep. to record more, but then I feel bad because all the takes are already so good, so I just don't want to ask her to sing some more. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, she has, like she, a, she's, she's an amazing, amazing artist. Like, I've always heard. Like in an hour, yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What, what can more singers be like that? Yeah, um, most of them are okay, but the rest of them I take about two hours. Mm. Yeah, they're not bad. Yeah. yeah. Two, hours, two hours, two hours plus is still hours, okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't let me start it with rappers. Oh, do it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm, I'm done like six hours sessions. What was the longest? Was what's, the longest, was the longest that, what's the longest you've ever you done, Yugi? Or rapper? Uh, I think around, around 
six hours la a break in the game and that was, and it's, that, that's because he wasn't good la but i had to you know make sure that he comes up right yeah well, but may, maybe because they well because they were with uh, um you know in malaysia maybe because they you were there that they felt nervous la <laughs> no no that time uh, yeah that that starts but then my vocal booth doesn't have a uh window is it uh it's it's just closed all the way mm-hmm. so whatever so they can just hear my voice only and after a while when you put the headphones it's just you and the music and it it it's just it's just that when they come in they think they're good but you tell them no you know and then you drill them you you make butter into cream like you make cream from butter then because they most of them they have no idea what is uh, olympics they come in you know at school level uh, So then, uh, sorry to digress. I uh, just wanted to ask John how how what was your rig when you recorded City uh that is good. Uh the rig is actually very simple. I used a Slate ML1 microphone into the Audient ID44. Everything else was in the box. That's all you need yeah. nowadays. Nowadays. <laughs> yeah, so we we actually did that same rig for two songs. Uh, she had a Raya song called Iklas in 2020, uh, no 2019, and then 2020 we did Siapa Tak Mahu. Yeah, both songs was was the same rig. Slate ML1 into the Audient mm-hmm. ID44. Which mic model did you end up settling on for the ML1? Oh, uh, it was. I'm pretty sure it was the C800G. Okay. Because yeah, that bright top end for the pop songs. Uh-huh. That that one tends to be my favorite. That one and the the Telefunken two fifty one for mm-hmm. like ballads and stuff. Yeah. You you reckon it's a good system to invest in the the ML series from Sweet? I I bought mine from Sweetwater, so I used uh, a friend's forwarding address in the US because they don't sell outside the US. Uh, I bought it when it was on sale, so I only paid about two point something, two point four k ringgit maybe, which is really really affordable for a mic like that, two thousand plus. So I I would say it's worth it because I record so many different artists and they all kind of sound different. So having the different mic models helps me find the right sound for them. Cool. Mm-hmm. Well, but you would, uh, but you would. Um... You would bake the recording with the uh, mic model already, or do you do it after? I have it on an insert, so I'm always mm-hmm. able to change it anytime I want. So I don't, mm. I don't make it in. I record, record it dry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, interesting. It, it is on oh. discount. It is on a promotion right now. No, I think. Yeah. Correct. Mm, it yeah. is. Like three nine nine, or is it four nine nine, or something like that? Uh yeah, yeah yeah it should be it should be about two thousand ringgit. Yeah, mm. okay. I've been. I was thinking about considering getting it, but it's always hard to wrap my head around how I would incorporate it into our uh, current setup. The way our studio is set up at the moment, how I would add it um, to to that room. Um, mm. I'm not quite sure how that works. Right. Yeah. Uh, like, the uh, ML one. Has like a they do use one of the VRS uh, interfaces for that, right? Initially, they recommend that you use their VMS one preamp, but I think after they they in fact discontinued it if I'm not wrong. And Slate himself said modern audio interfaces, as long as the preamp is clean and flat enough, you can record. Like oh. um, those characterless type of preamps, like uh, Focusrite or Audient. Um, I I don't think it would go very well for the very coloured type of preamps, but as long as the preamp is relatively flat, it's fine. Then the, the plugin does the modelling. I I guess the best would be something like RME is like totally flat and clean. That would be my dream preamp for a mic like that. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. They already they already said yeah you can just use any kind of a clean preamp. Uh, that that will do. Yeah. Yeah. What was your setup like, uh, Alton? Um, uh, a hybrid type studio, um, SSL matrix um, into two UAD sixteen Mark IIs, Thunderbolt. 
um, a bunch of different PMs, uh, API, Leaf, um, the 800 from, <laughs> what's the company called? It's a silver unit with eight PMs in it. Um, I forget the company's name. I think the ID44 comes from the same company. Oh, Audion, yeah. Audion, the Audion Audion. one, yes. Yeah. The old one, the 800, which is the, the, the 008. Um, right, yes. ASP, the, ASP 800 yeah, or something. Yeah, the ASP 008, the, old, the older one. Um, Therbionic stuff. Normal, stable, Therbionic, uh, culture, culture vulture. Early bird preamp, uh, semi-honic culture, the distortion box. It escapes me. I, I'm, I'm. And then the empirical labs, the stressors, the, the normal staple studio staple, uh, like the, the standard studio go to stuff, mainly massive passive stuff like that. No, no, no. Anyone else has uh, got experience with the modeling mics? Uh? Uh, uh, Ivan, Reening? No, uh, never used that one before. Yeah, well, uh, okay. But yeah. there are others as well. There is, of, of course, uh, Antelope also has their own system, Antelope Audio, and uh, Townsend, the Sphere as well. That is also... Um, that works very well with the uh, uh, universal um, ecosystem, I think. The town, Townsend, Townsend Sphere. Townsend Lab, yeah. yes. Mm. So those uh, and, are... and then you don't specifically need a, a, a microphone for, for that system, right? You would... I've not used it before, so I'm, I'm not sure. The Townsend, you need the mic, definitely. Oh, yeah? Because it's a stereo mic, actually. It's, it, the, it's actually a stereo microphone. Oh. Yeah, so that is like proprietary hardware, so can't really escape uh, escape from it. Yeah, the ant uh, the antelope one, I'm not so uh, sure, not so familiar with with that. Yeah, uh, but it's cool though. I mean, it it's always been tempting, like John, to get it because especially during the uh, every year and Black Friday is coming up also. <laughs> That's not a good good time of the year for the credit card <laughs> statement and bill, okay? <laughs> Black Friday yeah, is and, coming. And plus, uh, JD, you're a Slate user too, right? All Access Pass, VR. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I do love their stuff. The but the the, the yeah, thing is, yeah. Too. Yeah, but the only thing for me is that my setup and the way I run things, especially my monitoring end, I keep everything in the analog domain. So nothing goes through the converters, you know, like a, a like an old old fashioned inline console kind of a that's kind line. of yeah. That's kind of the same problem I have. Yeah. From, I the, from the preamps into the console, the console then sends it out to to the monitoring path. Yeah. To the to the interfaces that goes to portals. Yeah. And the monitors are all patched into the console as well. So the, the monitor controller is there as well. So it's, I don't listen to the monitor section of the UAD. Yeah. The monitor section comes straight out of the console. So it really starts making things tricky when you think of... Um, Correct. Exactly. Um, That's exactly the same uh, issue, you know? It's like, but if I get that, it's like, you know, I have to monitor everything through the... To, via the direct monitoring via the the door the daw that's what you do yeah. right john oh okay uh mm. actually i do not uh monitor through the door so what happens is i have the ml1 mic uh when the singer is recording they are hearing through the audience app direct through the audience output so they're actually listening to it without the mic model uh while they're singing and when I hit playback, then you'll hear it if I have it on. Yeah, uh, but sometimes I don't even have the mic models on when I record them. So it's just a flat, clean mic. They hear that uh, when they record and I hear it playback, I may add the mic model later after I'm done comping and stuff. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. Uh, in, in theory, though, 
in in theory you don't really need to use the ml1 mic then i've seen some uh use use cases for that where of course you need to buy the mic in order to get a license for the for the more for the uh, mic models but in theory you can just use any mic and just run it through that through the to yeah. the mic models and then and then you have a look at, at what it, you listen to what it actually sounds like um right i i don't think so that that's the thing you have to listen to it to to the door you know in in order to to hear it but it has to be at, at low latencies very very low latencies yeah if you want to hear it live then yeah then you need the low latency yeah you can use any mic i guess i i'm wonder i wonder how the profiling works they i suppose the ml1 is a ultra linear super flat mic but even if it wasn't, I think they would compensate for the curve of the ML1 before applying their modeling. So they'll flatten it out in software and then apply whatever curve. Mm, yeah. Whatever happens under the hood, uh, sometimes we don't know. And I don't 100% trust software developers and and uh, <laughs> and all the manufacturers. On, uh, you, know? you know, all yeah, the yeah, yeah. marketing lingo always makes things when when things such as ultra linear and super flat and <laughs> and all that yeah i started yeah. thinking to have to take with a pinch of salt lah. yeah okay to that my boss has come to call so i'm gonna call it tonight oh uh, okay it was all right. great hanging yes. out with you guys thank you very thank much thank you so much man. thank you everybody all right. Is that your yeah. Father? yeah it's my little baby she's oh. my She's my boss. <laughs> Gorgeous. What's your name? Georgia. Okay. Hi, Georgia. Say hello, Uncle. Hi. Uh, <laughs> we are hoping to come to your studio, uh, Elton. You've got a uh, yeah. hardware, ma- Massive Passive? Or? Uh, hardware, yes. Uh, massive Passive. Uh, not the mastering version, though. Okay. Well, it's not, uh, not the again. indented one. It's just the, the, the big one. Cool. Well, uh, where do I check uh, your? Do you have like website or? Um, let me. For now, we're basically updating the new page. Let me just write it. Uh, wait, 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 Georgia. Let me. I'll tell you what. I'll give you our Facebook page. Maybe that would be the easiest, right? Can I put right. it in the chat? Is that okay? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. On, on the what? Uh, yeah. On the on the AES WhatsApp also. Okay. No problem. Ah, uh, oh, cool. Oh, yeah. 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 The gear is impressive, man. Uh, thank you. I, I was lucky. Um, not mine. <laughs> Let me say that off the bat. I just work here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Definitely, man. If I plan a trip to to Penang, we'll definitely, uh, yeah, uh, definitely hit you up and and and, and make a visit. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. All right. So, so it's bed, I'll see bed, you guys around. Thank yeah. you very much for having okay. me. Bedtime. Bye. Yeah. Bye, Elton. Bye. Yeah. Bye, Elton. Bye. Super cool. Hey, Ivan. Yeah. What, what are you up yeah. to, man? I am uh, actually going to go back to work. <laughs> I got dialogue to edit. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, John, can we work? Uh, can we work with Omar? I can tell you, Omar, does he have any vacancy? Uh? we also. I also want to work, <laughs> work nine to yeah. nine to six, lah. Yeah. yeah. O- Omar actually left just before me. <laughs> He's like, okay, <laughs> bye, John. Aku balik dulu. Okay, bye. <laughs> hey, John. Um, so Omar, is, Omar Ibrahim, is it? You talking about Omar? No, no, no. Omar K. Omar K. Omar K. Omar K. Okay, all right. Not the drummer. Yeah. I thought. I thought. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Omar K, the songwriter producer. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. World peace. Yeah, world peace. Yeah. 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 <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay, guys, uh, yeah. I'm just gonna make a move. Gonna go back to uh, edit some stuff. Some more. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, yeah, feel yeah. a little bit semangat, more inspired. By, oh yeah, uh, man, by that was really good tonight. <laughs> yeah. Like more, more into it. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. thanks, Yeti. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for joining, Ivan. All right. Yeah. See ya. All right. See ya. Bye. 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 All right. Yeah. Da, da, da. Do you guys still want to... Uh... Oh, what time is it now? Oh, 9.30. Do you guys still want to hang around? Or I'll be more than happy to do so.
Or if you guys need to go, feel feel free lah. Yeah, I won't won't keep anyone waiting. Cool. I'm I'm heading back home, I guess, because tomorrow in early morning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. How's the so how's, how's the uh, how's the wife? Wife is good. Uh, yeah. Her yeah. job has her working from home now. Uh, right. Yeah. Good. Yeah, she's working for Intel. So their office is in Penang. But like now, since the pandemic, they started to outsource. Uh, jobs to other states so you can just work from where you are at home cool and you don't have yeah. to be in Penang yeah okay, okay. so we send my regards, send regards uh, to, to, her. to her we'll do we'll do yeah. how's your family man how's everyone in uh, uh well there? well yeah. status, quo. status quo everyone is still uh, uh well family, family here, here is okay, okay. but mm. my wife and son and of course my relatives over there are uh, still stuck there la. how's the covid thing over there How's the COVID? Well, they are kind of experiencing the spike now. They are like averaging eight, nine hundred. They've been a couple of days, like today or so, been slightly over a thousand. So for a country with such a low population as Laos, it's quite bad. Mm. And uh, the government, unfortunately, is not really seen to do anything. They are still, have their borders still closed. Even though mm-hmm. there is there are some uh, talk of uh, you know opening with uh, with uh, Tha- with uh, borders with Thailand, yeah, because Thailand already you know it's really opened up already. Uh. Yeah, they're like you no know, a whole bunch of countries that we can that that can go. Yeah, have they got vac- vaccines vaccinated over there? Uh, yeah, they have. <laughs> um, being in the city. Yes, they, the um, herself and you know most of the family members are all double vaccinated already, lah. Nice. Yeah, but um, you see, majority of the country is is rural population, so I think their vaccination, fully vaccination rate, is very very low. Last time I checked, is is like still twenty five percent. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, oh, Michelle has to go, so all right, have another <coughs> meeting. And Michelle's all the way over in, in Spain, anyway. <laughs> so, so, tonight's meeting is like truly international, man. We have Spain, KL, and all the way in uh, Edmonton, Canada. <laughs> yeah. Rugi lah, sayang that, you know, uh, we didn't, I didn't find out, I didn't know that he was uh, here in, uh, in Malaysia. <laughs> Yeah, it was so unexpected. Kelvin yeah. suddenly posted like, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And I think he and I think he was the one who went and pecha the secret lah. I I'm 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 sure he wanted it to be knowing him, he's to, he wants to be low profile, he wants to keep everything quiet, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then and then when the picture came out, it's like everybody tried to look for him. <laughs> I went and <laughs> I went and I had to email I emailed him, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, but I was uh, very, very um, uh, um, definitely very, very thankful, thankful that, that he agreed to do this, lah. You know, if, yeah. even though such so so, so last minute, last minute mm, just mm, running and, and, and chit chat with us, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. How's and the all, studio, man? How's work? Work is oh, work is work is mad, uh, a bit crazy okay. because I I'm sure you, I'm sure you I don't know whether you're facing a similar problem of. Projects that are backlog, you know, oh, things, yeah. that, things that were, yeah, you know lah. Oh my god. Yeah. Now everything is like yeah. back together on top of whatever is for fourth quarter. Yes. Uh, the song that I'm recording this Sunday was pitched and, and accepted two years ago. <laughs> pitched and accepted two years ago. Yeah, yeah, we're coming. We're going to record. We are, we're going to, okay, we'll pay the deposit. Okay, pay deposit already. Yeah, yeah, as soon as lockdown leaves, we'll be there. We'll be there. Last two years pass and they're like, all right, man, this oh. Sunday it's on. Uh, yeah. So that's happening to you too. Yeah, yeah. I just mixed, I'm uh, in the final stage of mixing a song that again was started two years ago. Lah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I've never had this kind of situation, you know, it's like, Backlog from so much backlog from then, pile on top of whatever's coming now. Yeah, and mm. I'm listening to my work from two years ago. I'm like, oh no, why do I sound like this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but because things move so fast, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you did great, amazing work on the on the dollars new single, by the way. 
Thank you, sir. I, I really like the the distorted bit crushed guitar thing. I'm gonna steal that idea and, do. and use it for something. <laughs> it's and it's then, an honor, and then everyone will start to have that. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that like, Dude, it's a, it's an honor for me, man. Like I grew up listening to uh, Mara Bahaya, and I was like, wow, how do I get that guitar sound? And then I tried to copy that, and then hey, guitar uh, sound come full circle. Like, guitar shit, sound, shit. Just, just, Guitar sound just a uh, uh, preset direct out from line six. <laughs> HD. What? Two point oh. It was HD back then. Okay. Um, but is the HD one four seven in the M? But oh, same. It's the same algorithm. Oh. Right. Right. Yeah. So basically, it's one of the patches, lah. Man, but but the way it sits in the mixer, so it's very nice, and you hear everything else. Mm-hmm. And I was like cranking it in my car, jet, 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 like wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then now it's like come full circle to mm. okay, JD's copying clean tones yeah. <laughs> from pop. Yeah. yeah. One one thing that uh just now actually from Phil's conversation that I have got uh I would say what's the word? I a bit of a disappointment, you know, uh from just now, is that now I found out that Phil did not mix the first Chris Cross album. Right, because you guys had a song. That because the like first simple. song was Jump and all this while in these 20 years because based on whatever information we could find it was Phil Tan I mean Yogi was involved Yogi helped produce our first single was Jump you know, you know? so right. we thought it was Phil Tan who mixed the, mixed the record so I almost wanted to say uh, <laughs> that hey you know <laughs> you were inspired by Ben's career we, we covered you know the, the single that you mixed luckily I didn't say it <laughs> Otherwise, but, Malu. Yeah, but I knew he didn't mix la. He, yeah. Uh, yeah, because he joined uh JD uh mm. post Chris Cross. Yeah. Because if he if he mixed Chris Cross, Chris Cross was huge when the, the original album exploded here. He yeah. would have been famous then itself. Mm. Uh and when JD started uh his studio, uh the Chris Cross I think was the first album he did and he bootstrapped the entire studio and uh, mm. album it was very hard he, yeah. he 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 had to beg borrow take money loan and then you know do the album record yeah. labels yeah. Thing, you know. yeah. So, uh, but the friendship between phil and jermaine is something of a different yeah level. yep yep it is man yeah definitely yeah so that's the thing you see i had i had one of my uh, long, long time dreams smashed just now. <laughs> oh, it wasn't Phil that mixed, mixed that, that single. Yeah. Yeah. All of us thought, you know, uh, I was chatting with the rest of the band. So they think that they, they, they thought that, uh, yeah, you know, Phil, Phil mixed that, that track. So who, who did good. mix that track? I don't know, man. Yeah. The, the mix on the track is okay. La. It's, it's nothing great, but. Phil's work on uh, uh, on Mariah Carey's album. Oh, amazing. oh yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. So when he told me he mixes, especially his toys with Dyna Audios, that is one of those because I hate it. <laughs> especially, like, you know, that, that, I wouldn't say that model, like, that, that era of Dyna yeah. Audios. Mm. So, you know, when he's slow, yeah. especially on low end, that means he really knows his low end or his boom is just spot on. Uh, Mm, yeah. yeah, that's a very that's old a model, you know, that Dan Audio. Ah, very old model. Yeah. yeah. And the only headphones that he saved is something that another Malaysian engineer in, uh, in uh, US also recommended. They say that's the shit, you know. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they came out with a new version of the headphones. That he didn't mention the model. Uh, but Odyssey's latest models for reference uh, mixing uh, have got lesser weight material to make the, to make the ease of wearing better. Mm, I see. Yeah. yeah. But that I think uh, I really want to hear. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. I can afford what I want to hear. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah, quite a few guys here have the Odyssey. Um, Felix Voon. If you know he has the Odysseys, um, Jason Huang in Sabah also. Uh, yeah, but Jason also told me if you don't get the Odyssey, even the Sennheiser HDs are great. So that's mm. what I ended up getting. I have um, HD 650s now. Mm. Very, very good for mixed translation, actually. When I mix at home, I use them. The 
the 650s then the, which one is the one with the the uh, flagship the gorilla glass one uh i'm not sure that, could that be the eight, 800 maybe is the 800 so, so the 800 then the 650 is it i think so then below that is 600 uh, so how is the 650 again? Sorry. I, I love it. I think it's pretty good. It translates very well. Um, during the pandemic, when I was at lockdown at home, I mixed on them. Uh, when I brought the projects back to the studio and listened on the speakers, it was fine. So I actually do prefer using the headphones now and then checking and referencing on speakers. What headphone amps do you use or do you uh, come direct out of your sound card? Straight out of the audience. Uh, yeah, straight out of the audience. I didn't get an external headphone amp yet. Excellent. Ooh, so someone's going into headphone territory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But more and more people are, no? Yeah. Oops. Hello. Yep. Oh, okay, right. Oh, is yeah. an accidental mute? Yeah. <laughs> you are, oh, you are oh, auto muted yourself. Yeah, but I was really shocked like he's mixing mm. from only the laptop because I thought he would probably say oh for you know I'll jump into a like you know my uh, friend studio or I rent out some studio with some small SSL or some 500 series stuff oh tada so the laptop oh, <laughs> it's like okay he can do it you better do also lah <laughs> he's also I think his go-to is quite uh, UAD stuff huh? yeah. isn't it mm. A lot of uh, UAD, a lot of uh, the old classic waves plugins. Uh, he mentions the metric halo, the metric halo channel strip a lot, and he uses and he uh, and he uses that a lot as well, uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bro, I gotta go. Yeah, no yeah, worries, man. Right, man. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. John, you, you gotta go as well, right? Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Yogi, it's such an honor to meet you online. I know we've not met before. Uh, when I was growing up, it was Poetic Ammo, Who Be The Player was on radio and it was like, wow. It was, yeah, something really different at the time when I first started listening to local music. So thank you for everything. Thanks, thanks, John. Uh, you on Facebook? Where, what's your name? Yeah, uh, let me type it in the uh, chat here. Instagram is John Jeeves. Uh, uh, Facebook is John Jeeves Single. Yeah. All right. All right. Great, bro. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Thanks, right? You, all, yeah, you all have a good night. Stay safe. Okay. Thank yeah. you, bro. Thank you, Jenny. Take Thank care, you. guys. Take care. Yeah. See ya. Bye. 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 Bye.